Hey internet, what's happening? I know I, had made a, I haven't made a video in like such a long time, but I'm making a video right now. <clears throat> anyway, um, I've been, uh, over the course of this weekend, I've just been putting together a brand new cube. So, this one is a lot better. Um, it's, I just have a simple animation running on it right now, but it's a definite improvement over the little brother, <laughs> I guess. Like, this one looks really, ah, it's a prototype, I suppose you could say. Anyway, so this is the brand new cube. I just have one simple test animation running on it right now. I'm still in the process of working through a few things. But let's go over a few of the features, I guess. Um, yeah, so right now it's hooked up to the uh, to the programmer. Oh, I got a message on my phone. Right now it's hooked up to the programmer, so a few little uh, things here. Uh, the LED here, if it's hooked up to the programmer, it uh, turns, um, turns on as a, an orange LED. And so if I disconnect this, I'll disconnect it from the programmer. So there's the, the cube itself. Now if I connect it to a power supply, I have a power supply made for it, which is just positive and negative uh, coming out of a uh, adapter. And if I plug in the power here, and if I plug it in backwards, so reverse polarity, I get a red LED indicator that, you know, hey, something's wrong. So if I connect the power the right way, here I get a green LED to tell me that everything is all good and the animation of course starts playing so let's just go if, go over a few things I guess just a general idea of how this works because I didn't explain how it works in my last video when I made one but this one's a lot more cleaner now as you can see there's no wires on the surface they're all on the bottom. Anyway, <clears throat> so how this works is, oh, I also have some some status indicator LEDs here. Uh, so I have six of these small LEDs, and those are going to be for um, telling the user what pattern is is currently playing. So uh, and it's going to be in binary, of course. So if that lights on it'd be the second pattern but that doesn't quite work yet um, so it's still have to work on the code for that but let's go ahead and plug this for a minute yeah so the power basically comes in here and it could be anything from 6 volts to 12 volts and then it comes through this diode here which protects against reverse polarity so if it's hooked up wrong the red LED goes on through this resistor here and if it's hooked up the correct way uh, it'll go through this diode into the filtering capacitor into a voltage regulator which will drop the voltage down to 5 volts constant and then from there that powers the green LED to tell it that everything's okay um, this re uh, diode here is for when power is coming from the programming header um, because power has to flow from here to the chip in order to get, um, get, get it working from the programmer and also to communicate with the chip. Um, <clears throat> but that would also turn on the green LED because they're connected to the same conductive path. So that's what that diode is for, is to prevent turning on the green LED, because we only want the orange one on, or the yellow one, I guess. And this microchip here is an ATmega328 um, from Atmel microcontroller. It's uh, a 20-pin controller, um, and it has 32 kilobytes of onboard flash 
RAM. So this is basically the brains of the whole operation. Um, this header is just for connecting to the computer like you've seen a little while ago. Uh, connects power, ground, and uh, um, signals for communicating with this chip in, uh, in serial. Stats indicator leads like I said and <clears throat> and these there's four layers here and all the layers uh, the, the um, cathodes of the LEDs are connected um, all together in all four layers and then the anodes are all connected together and they're hooked up to each column is hooked up to its own individual resistor so I got 16 columns 16 resistors um, these chips over here are used for multiplexing these are uh, these are what uh, chip is this is the SN 50 or 74 HC 238 encoder chips and what they do is they take three inputs and convert it to eight outputs so if I were to control this cube individually using the microcontroller um, it would take uh, 64 pins to drive each of these LEDs if I were to do it individually but since they're split like this I would still need 16 pins plus three grounds these are the ground wires here so I need 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I would need 20 pins to control this cube. However, using the, uh, the 3 to 8 encoders, I only need 3 wires coming out of each chip, plus my 4 grounds. So I only need uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 wires instead of 20. So, and then, so I can use other things for other things. So that's more or less... How that works. Oh, there's also a resistor here to a different resistor type for for those. And on the back, the back is kind of a kind of a rat's nest. Um, I have the white wires are for my status indicator LEDs. Uh, here, these four blue wires here are for the different grounds. I have power coming in here and ground there. These are for the different LEDs and going through their respective diodes. And these chips also need power and ground. So the, the two grounds of the two chips are connected by this wire here. And I have one 5 volt wire coming in here. And it also jumps that using an orange wire to the other chip for 5 volts. And then the select pins here and here. And then underneath all that is the connections for for the uh, LEDs. So the LEDs, all 16 of the anodes of the LEDs actually connect to these two chips. So that the it's actually divided because since there's only eight outputs and I have 16 columns, I need two chips. So this chip here handles this half of the cube. So the two, four, six, eight. And this chip handles the other half, two, four, six, eight. So, and then they work together to basically make one big picture. And that's, I guess, a, a real brief overview of how all that works. So, yeah. If anybody has any questions, write me an email. My email address is j44dge at gmail.com. Peace.